Hello everyone, my name is Pietro and in this video I want to showcase the VAB of KSP2. Starting from the common pods section we can see that there are the parts that we used to know and love but they also added new sizes for various different things like for example the capsule that can hold 5 kerbals. Moving on to the fuel tank section, we see now that what we used to know as liquid fuel and oxidizer is now called Metalox. Here again we see some XL parts that are the equivalent of the 5 meter parts in KSP-1. There are the methane tanks that are the ones to be used for airplanes and then we see again uh, Xenon, we see monopropellant and also hydrogen which is the one to be used for nuclear engines. Also in the engine section we see that there were some revamps, the launch escape systems made its landing in the solid fuel booster part and not in the utility as in KSP-1 and they added some bigger hydrogen uh, so nuclear engine. For the structural part instead we see again the struts and we see the addition of lots of new beams, body parts, panels of different sizes and shapes, then there are also some hubs which are this metallic structure to integrate and create bigger spacecraft, the trusses that can also be used to build giant structures and uh, various resizers and relati related parts to them. Moving on to the coupling section instead, we have again the decouplers, the separators, the radial decouplers and the docking ports and here they go from the extra small to the XL size. In the payload section we have all the fairings, we have the cargo bay parts that allow us to build stuff like starship or shuttles, we have crew cabins of all sizes and also truss pieces that allow to put payload inside. The aerodynamics part we have nose cones, air intakes, the procedural wings of various sizes with stabilizers, control surfaces and tail sections. In the ground section we have landing legs, landing gear and wheels of all various different sizes. In the thermal for now we have only the heat shields. In the electrical section we see the addition of bigger batteries, solar arrays and generators. Then instead in the communications part we see the antennas that we know and love from KSP-1 and in the utility section we see again obviously parachutes and then RCS, stabilizers, lights and ladders. They so cut off the control and stability section as in KSP-1, now the RCS are here. There was the addition of a new section which is the favorite section to which we can add all the favorite parts and then use them and access them directly from there. Now you see me putting together a very simple spacecraft to show off some of the features. For example we can change the workspace orientation to make our spacecraft start horizontal or go into the ortho views that allow us to see our spacecraft from the sides, from the top, from the bottom in better ways than what we used to be able to do in KSP-1. To exit from the auto view we can just simply move around the camera by holding down the right mouse button and moving the mouse around. To go up and down now we have to hold the mouse wheel and put the mouse up and down. To zoom in and zoom out we have to use the scroll wheel. As we had in KSP-1 we have the indicators of center of mass, center of thrust and center of lift that can be activated here from the bottom. We have obviously the symmetry feature that goes from 1 to 8 as in KSP-1 but then there is the symmetry in the same exact loop. We have the snap on or off that can be activated here or also using the X hotkey as in KSP-1. While instead, differently from it, the rotation and translation commands are in the same section, just the side of the selection tool. And we can just drag the parts up and down, rotate them, and obviously activating or deactivating the snap feature allows us to move off a smooth amount or of fixed amounts. We have then the assembly anchor button that allows us to choose the root part of our spacecraft. To go away from the selection I have to press 1 and 2 or the hotkeys for translation and positionment, I don't know why. And then we also have the launch assembly button which allows us to choose between the various assemblies that we have in our workspace which one we want to launch on the launch pad. Because yeah, now we can build different spacecraft together in the VIB and then we can choose which one we want to launch and which one so it's gonna be brought to the launch pad when we press the launch button. You can see me here putting this feature to the test by building these two funny spacecraft I guess and then clicking on the one to the right and that is the one that's gonna be on the launch pad. These by the way are the real time loading times that my laptop that does not meet the minimum requirements has so the game is really really fast to load and also to load back inside the VAB. I can just imagine how it is on better hardware. A new and cool feature that was introduced in KSP2 is definitely the possibility 
of coloring the parts of our rockets in the ways that we want. When we start a new campaign, a new game, we have to select the agency colors and these two colors are always automatically put to all the various parts of our rockets but we can modify them for the single assembly, for the single parts and we can also decide the transparency of the colors to like show the metal behind or to be full thick color as I'm showing off here. The next feature is the engineer's report that can be accessed from the bottom right of the screen but to close the color manager we need to go back to the placing or rotating uh, functionalities and then we can see that the engineer's report shows us that we don't have a parachute, that we don't have enough TBR, it shows us the mass, the dry mass, the parts of our spacecraft and its dimensions. The engineer's report can be dragged around, we can resize it by clicking on the bottom left and dragging with uh, uh, our mouse and then we can also close it by the cross at the top right. The next feature is the parts manager, instead of right clicking directly on the parts and having windows popping up all over the screen we can access all the features of all the parts from the part manager it's a little bit laggy because it has to uh, get the information of all the tweakables of every part but we can see we can turn on the lights we can decide how much fuel we want we can decide the thrust level of an engine we can decide in which direction it will gimbal and all these cool things that we used to do also in ksp1 we have then the trip planner that shows us the amount of that we required to do a one-way trip to a planet to a moon or any body of the Kerbolar system or also to do a round trip but just simply pay attention because when you say that you want to do a round trip it simply doubles the amount of data V that is required which is not exactly always the case for example if you do a mission to go around the moon and then come back to Kerbin and you want to land back on Kerbin you are not going to need those 3400 meter per second of data V to circularize in a circular orbit around Kerbin when coming back from the moon you are going to just simply use aero braking and re-enter therefore you don't need all that delta v on your spacecraft last but not least we have the kerbal manager that lets us choose which kerbal we want to put on board our spacecraft and try to launch into space when it's the time of saving our vehicle we can just uh, hit save give a name to the workspace like a cool name and then also to our vehicle name and we can call it a cool name too then just hit save and we are ready for launch from the bottom right of the screen we can choose between the four launch pads the two runways and the boat launch and then just hit launch and we are ready to perform our mission I wanted to leave you with this view of the KSC in a day in which Kerbin forgot that it had an atmosphere and I think I hope that you found the video interesting and useful. Maybe you learned some new stuff about the VAB controls in KSP2 and I hope that you would consider giving a like and subscribing to the channel for more Kerba Space Programming 2 content. Catch you next time, bye bye, have a nice day!